Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. It's been a little while since we checked out a motherboard and we're pretty late to the party with this one because we only just received it, but there's a couple interesting things about the ASUS Z790 Creator Pro Art board that I think content creators might find pretty interesting and a couple other features that maybe if you're not using this for content creation, you might find interesting as well. But as usual with our motherboard content, these videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can see what's on the board and what physically comes in the box with a brand new motherboard. The reason why we do this is because it gives you a good idea of what you're getting when you buy a new motherboard. So without further ado, let's see what makes this thing tick. But before that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. is brought to you by MSI and their new Radiax Tri-Band Wi-Fi gaming routers. Game and create on the latest 6 GHz band and enjoy interference-free Wi-Fi, capable of delivering up to 6600 megabits. Download, stream and game like never before. Reduce network latency and enjoy optimized traffic with AIQOS automation. MSI AIQOS works in real time so you can focus on work without worrying about having enough speed. MSI ensures maximum hardware reliability and network stability through the use of a premium heatsink, which works to keep the temperatures down and to keep you online. Equipped with a 1.8 GHz quad-core ARM processor, unleash the full support of Wi-Fi 6 features such as beamforming. Learn more about MSI's latest Radiax Tri-Band Gaming Routers via the links in the video description. All right, here it is, the Asus ProArt Z790 Creator Wi-Fi. Let's do our usual thing. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a little bit of a closer look at everything that comes in the box with this brand new motherboard. First up, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna. This is for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E. This is actually a pretty slick looking antenna if you ask me. Then we have this little code here. These QR codes are for the ASUS Control Center Express software. This is for full motherboard control. Don't worry, I covered my own serial number. There's also this round plastic device. I, I don't know what this is for. Can someone in the comments please let me know what this is for? What is this thing? There's also this user guide. Now this basically will show you how to set everything up, where everything is in the BIOS, and how to configure everything if you've never done it before, or if you're an expert. Okay, let's open some flaps and see what we got. We've got some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. I like that they include four here because for a content creation board, you're likely to use more than one drive. There's also some spare pads and clips for the M.2 slots on this board. This board has four M.2 slots in total, which we'll take a look at in a little moment. There's also this little front panel block. This is for all your lights on your switches to let you know your system's up and running. You can plug everything into this in case the wiring is slightly different. There's also a Pro Art ruler, so you can measure things. I don't know what you would be measuring with this, but hey, free ruler, pretty cool, huh? Lastly, there's a DisplayPort cable. This one's interesting. This board's got Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4, so it supports Thunderbolt displays, and this is to pass your GPU's signal through to the motherboard for Thunderbolt. But let's unsheath that Z790 Creator Wi-Fi and see what makes this board tick. There's quite a lot to get through. So strap yourself in and let's take a closer look. First up, there's a front panel audio header, a serial port header. There's two PWM fan headers, two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. If you wanted to use those, there's two, that's crazy actually. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like your liquid coolers and RGB controllers, two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or spinning rush drives, another PWM header and the front panel connector for all your lights on your switches to let you know your system's up and running. There's also six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or spinning rush drives. There's a right angled USB 3.2 type A front panel header, a USB type C front panel header, 
There is additional power. This is PCIe power for the motherboard for all those slots. There's a 24 pin power connector to send power to your brand new Z790 Creator Wi-Fi. Another three pin five volt addressable RGB header, a postcode LED array to help you diagnose your system and a four pin 12 volt RGB header. Along the top right hand edge of the board, you can see there is three more PWM fan headers for things like liquid coolers, system fans, or if you're using an air cooler. There's also a an 8-pin EPS power connector to send juice to your CPU and a supplemental 4-pin EPS power connector on the top left-hand side of the board. In terms of PCIe slots, this one's actually pretty interesting. We've got one PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot, a 5.0 by 8 slot, and a 4.0 by 4 slot down the bottom. Pretty excellent connectivity. In terms of power delivery, it's a 16 plus one phase teamed power system with 70 amp power stages. And if you ask me, the heat sinks look pretty solid for a board like this, not too bad. For cooler mounting, this has standard LGA 1700 mounting, but does support older mounting with those additional holes as well. This uses Intel's LGA 1700 socket, which supports 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs. And it's looking like 14th gen CPUs will also be using this socket as well. But that's all I can say for now because I don't know anything. If we flip the board over, you can see that there's not a lot going on back here. But I show this because we do get a lot of questions as to what the backside of these motherboards look like. And yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> Nothing too exciting. In terms of RAM support... This supports up to four DDR5 RAM modules, up to 192 gigs of RAM at 7,200 mega transfers. I like that they've upped the RAM limit here. There's also this little push button. This is to release the top M.2 slot. This makes removing your GPU a heck of a lot easier. This has become a pretty standard thing now. All right, let's get the heat sinks off the M.2 slot so we can take a look at what the storage situation is here. This board has Four PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots, they're all by four slots as well. There's one at the top above the top PCIe slot. There's one in the middle above the second PCIe slot. And then there's two which are next to each other towards the bottom of the board. All of these M.2 slots also feature that clip. So you don't need to use screws anymore for your M.2 slots. You just put it in the slot, clip the drive in, and you're good to go. For rear I.O., here's where it gets very interesting. Two DisplayPort connectors. This is for pass-through to the Thunderbolt 4 ports, which there are two of. There's also an HDMI port. There's 10 gigabit Ethernet on board. Also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. The 10 gig is way cooler. Those Thunderbolt ports also support USB 4.0 as well. There's a bunch of USB type A ports. There's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, a BIOS flashback button in case you need to update your BIOS without a CPU, and audio jacks for that surround sound. There's no digital audio here. <laughs> All right, have you guys enjoyed this little bit of an overview of the ProArt Z790 Creator Wi-Fi? There's a few things that I found pretty interesting with this board. First thing is, this is a Z790 board that actually has 10 gigabit ethernet. Now, for a board that's not EATX, it's quite unusual for it to have 10 gigabit ethernet included. And the reason why this is important is because for people like me who create content and for people who move a lot of large files across networks that are 10 gig networks, means you don't have to have an add-in card on a regular desktop board. Now, there's only a few motherboards that I can think of that have 10 gigabit ethernet already integrated. And as you go into like Threadripper Pro and Sapphire Rapids, all those boards have that, but lower down the stack in the desktop realm, 
it is still pretty unusual to have that feature. And this has also got dual ethernet, which I think is pretty interesting too. So you got your 2.5 gig as a separate interface and your 10 gig interface. One comment I see on videos with motherboards like this, let's say it's a Gigabyte Aero board or just like these content creation focus boards is, can I buy this motherboard for a gaming PC? Absolutely, it doesn't matter. It's, at the end of the day, it's just a motherboard that is designed for a certain market segment. This one is aimed at content creation, right? Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you can use it for content creation, but you can also use it for gaming. So realistically, it doesn't really matter what you do with this board. The things that make this a content creation focus board, as mentioned, is things like 10 gigabit ethernet. That for content creators, especially video editors who move a large volume of files across the network or need fast access to network attached storage or a SAN, 10 gigabit ethernet is a must. So I know I keep talking about 10 gigabit ethernet, but if you guys are new here, you might not know this, but all of our network here at Gearseekers is 10 gig. And this one is gonna end up in Claire's new editing PC. Her Z690 error has given her a couple problems. And this one turned up almost like it was planned, but we didn't plan it at all. So we're gonna swap her system out and build her a, I guess, a pro art themed editing PC. We've got the pro art RTX 4080 as well that goes with this board. Make sure you get yourself subscribed so you can see when we do that. There's another thing that makes this board interesting to talk about right now. The fact that it's not exactly confirmed, but we're hearing that there's a refresh coming with 14th gen that will still be on LGA 1700. What does that mean for you? Well, that means that there's probably not going to be a new chipset with 14th gen and that it'll just be a BIOS update and we'll be ready to go with 14th gen. So these boards are still worth looking at. I mean, I could be wrong. I have no idea about the specifics of that or if that's even going to be a thing, but this is just what I hear through the grapevine, through many different other creators and different media channels. This is what we're hearing at the moment. So if that's the case, still looking pretty interesting again especially for content creation. 10 gigabit ethernet, don't forget about that. Now the only drawback with this board that I can see, and this is something I realized a bit later was when I was looking at pricing for this board. Because if you're interested in this board, right, this is, this is crazy to me. In US dollars, you can get this for around 449 US dollars, which for a board with this feature set seems to be a normal price. I know it's not normal for a few years ago, but anyway, the Australian price, 1,029 Australian dollars. I don't get it. Oh, if it was like $800, I would understand, even though that is a lot of money for a motherboard, but $1,029 for this board in Australia is absurd money. It's just too much money. I'm not sure where companies are getting their pricing models from for these things because in Australia, it just does not make sense. It frustrates me to no end, but you know, no one ever listens to what I've got to say about pricing, but that's just how it is. But to me personally, I find this board pretty interesting, not only for the reasons that I specified earlier, but you could build a pretty decent, let's call it a server with a board like this because of the 10 gig ethernet. And because that interface is already there, it just makes it easier. I know I keep coming back to 10 gigabit ethernet, but to me, that is just something that I think should just become a standard thing on all boards now. It's not, but it definitely should be. And if you like videos like this, ladies and gents, do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there. It's down there somewhere, down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I am your motherboard overviewing boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done one of these. You peak, we seek in. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a late overview. It's about six months that this board's been out, but I still think it's pretty interesting and, and I think it's, worth talking about because it might not be a board that you've seen come up very often. Thanks for watching.